We are Maria and Nicole. We're two secular homeschooling moms that have been been there, done done that. that. Welcome to episode 16, How Do You Survive a Bad Day? Today, we are going to be talking about how do you teach an angry child? We're going to be talking about when is it time to abandon ship? And how do you survive big life changes? We're going to be talking about all that and more. And as usual, we want to stress that our podcast is an inclusive space for your everyday parents that are looking for education options. We are not here to convince you to homeschool. Uh, We want to stress that you need to do what works for your child and for your family. Every family is different. Absolutely. And you know your children best. So uh, feel free to take what advice or information you get from here that works for you and chuck the rest. Hey, Nicole, how's it going? Great, Maria. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I'm super excited about today's episode. I am too. I've been kind of going through old Facebook posts and stuff, trying to find a picture, but also just remember some of the bad days oh that gosh. I've had. In There's the past. been so many bad days that <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we try to block them out. So we have to have a photo memory. We do. And I just showed you one of my old ones <laughs> where, like, I had actually posted a cute picture, but the true story behind. <laughs> was awful. I used to host this Victorian Christmas craft party like every year for my kids and their little friends. Sounds fun. Except you know that one of my bad habits is that I consistently pick craft projects that are a little bit above the actual ability range. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> of the kids. <laughs> and so so I had this beautiful spread. We lived in this house on two acres. I had this beautiful spread outside. We had a kumquat tree and we were going to make those pomander oranges with cloves that you stick in. And we had needles to do popcorn and cranberry strings and a bunch of other things. And I mean, it was it turned into a bloodbath. <laughs> Like somebody got hit in the eye with a kumquat, like everybody's fingers are bleeding from either the needle or the cloves. You can't make one of those cloved things very fast either. So like everybody did like one line and was like, I'm out. The picture picture didn't look like that. No, there was peanut butter. Like it was a mess. Like the whole yard was trash. It was nuts. Oh, the picture was beautiful. Picturesque picnic table. Yeah. It's probably why I look at it. And then the next year I'm like, hey, I should do another one of those great Victorian craft Christmas parties. It's always a good time. Is it like whenever we have a baby and we're like, we don't remember the pain. Oh, wait, let's just have another baby. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Well, you survived that bad day. I did. And I've had plenty myself. Mm -hmm. Math tears were uh, plenty in my house, in my homeschool. One time when my little guy was crying and things weren't going so well and uh, he was all set up and he was going to do five more problems and everything was fine. I walk away and I come back and all over his paper there's no math. There's circuits, positive and negative <laughs> charge, batteries. He was super into circuits. And, you know, I could have really gotten angry. Yeah. But I realized right in that moment, you know what? Let's abandon ship. Let's go build yep. circuits. And that's Let's what we did. We hit math up later. But yeah, we survived. Yeah. Sometimes it's what you have to do. Yeah. Let's get started on today's episode. So if you are having a hard homeschool day, we totally understand because we have been there, <laughs> and done, done that. that. <laughs> <laughs> we get frazzled just like every other homeschool mom. So you're going to have those bad days. You are. And not every day is going to look like a Pinterest photo or an Instagram post. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> you do not want to see the worst of my days. So I'm just going to keep posting those highlights um, unless it's like really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have to keep in mind that homeschooling is a marathon and it's not a sprint. You will get through it. And we are here to help give you some tips, tricks and encouragement to help you get through those challenging days. In this episode, we are going to bring you some much needed perspective and hope to your day. And, you know, the thing about a bad day is that at the end of it, it's over and you have the opportunity to start a new tomorrow. We're going to help you get through those bad days. So how do you survive a bad day? Well, the first thing that I would recommend is just to step away like I did with my guys. So take time out from each other. Homeschooling means that we are around each other all of the time. Take some time to all go to your own place, in your own corners in your house, and just be alone for a while. This is especially true for tweens and teens. They are at an age where they are becoming more independent, and during that transitional time, they're going to start needing more time away from you. Some homeschool parents think that it's important to establish that they are the boss. And if this is how you see your role in the relationship, then just be a respectful boss. 
it's okay to step away and take a pause if you see that things are going south quickly. Just take a breath and count to 10. Take a moment to gather yourself and just calm down. Yeah, don't let your reaction to your child's behavior or to an incident escalate an already sour situation. Right. Like bad moods are horribly contagious and you're the one that's the adult. Like it's your job to diffuse or de-escalate. Like don't be part of the problem yourself. For sure. The next thing that you can do is to just focus on one thing. Mm -hmm. When days fall apart, you can't do it all. Well, you can't do it all anyway. <laughs> right. So just choose one thing that you can do and do it. You could decide to give your child only one thing to do. You could choose to only focus on cooking dinner or just whatever. One thing at a time. What's the old saying that there's not really a productive multitasker? Uh, true. It's that we're all just multitasking everything mediocre. I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, I promise you're not going to be productive during that stressful moment. So stop multitasking right there. Let everything go except for that one focus item. Yeah. And if are the kids at each other's throats? Is everyone in a bad mood and it's just getting worse? Maybe just try bagging it all and leaving to connect with some friends or your homeschool group. No one is ever going to get your situation like another frazzled homeschool mom. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> and maybe having some buffer friends to play with away from your sibling can ease some of that rivalry that might be going on today in your house. Oh, yes, for sure. The next thing you could do is you could just change something. You are in charge of your homeschool and how your day goes. You absolutely can change it up. Oh, for sure. There are many ways to accomplish the same purpose besides doing every single thing that a curriculum tells you to do. You can also break up a lesson into smaller digestible bites. You talked about that in last week's episode. Yeah, and cons consider if this is something that comes up like every single time you do math, for instance. Maybe it's actually an issue with the program you're using. So don't be afraid to change right. things. It might not be a fit for that child. Yeah, yeah, it's totally okay. Another thing that you can try is maybe like we stop everything and we're going to go on a field trip. Take an impromptu field trip, get out of the house, maybe use some of those Groupons that you bought and let expire for the adventure park or the <laughs> aquarium or hit your area's historic farm and just continue your history lesson, but in a different location. You can also just bag the academics or the school books and have a movie day. Just drop everything for popcorn and movie day and you Yay. can even choose a documentary and you can still make it about learning. Yeah, or go outside, run off some steam. Exercise, take a bike ride, head to the gym, or head to the trampoline park. Those oh, are always I love fun. that. Exercise is a great stress release, and moms need outside time, too. Oh, my gosh, I definitely do. And I love the trampoline park, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, there's nothing like a long walk to, like, clear my head and relieve anxiety. Another thing you can do is just get out in nature. Go into the woods for a nature hike. You've run a hiking group for many mm -hmm. years, and I love it. I found that being outdoors is an instant calming mechanism for me and my kids. Even if it's raining or snowing. Sometimes that's better. Yeah, sometimes it is. Being outside is healing for your soul. It clears your mind, and then you can come back in and just reset. Yep. Sometimes I would even make like my crabby kids, if they were fighting and stuff, do some calisthenics. <laughs> you have all this energy to bug your sister, go take a lap around the house. Do some push-ups then. <laughs> and right. keep doing those till you don't feel so angry. One year I got some <laughs> dice from the dollar store. They were blank sided and I just took a Sharpie on each one. I read push-ups. Oh, one fun. One sit-ups and then we just roll it and do Oh, I love that. Things. I actually have some that are already like pre-printed. I probably got them from five below. So for five dollars... <laughs> You don't, you don't have to write it yourself. <laughs> Save yourself $4 and do right. it my way. <laughs> okay. We have so, something in every budget price range for you here at the BTDT <laughs> podcast. For sure. The next thing you can do is an activity. So mm -hmm. do some activities instead of hardcore lessons. Don't forget our teenagers need playtime too. So yeah. play a board game together. Board games are fun and they can help reconnect you. Also, if you're doing math and they are having some of those dreaded math tears, <laughs> stop and just play a math game. The concepts are the same. So why not do it in a little bit funner way? Yeah. This one seems weird, but it works. Take a bath or a warm shower. I've totally stopped what I'm doing to like run a bath for a stressed out kid. Just some hot water, throw some Epsom salts in there, a bath bomb, you know, and just <laughs> tell them to go soak, wash your face, come out when you feel nice <laughs> or calmer. If you can, like you go do it too. Like take some extra time, put a face mask on, slather lotion all over when you get out. Right. Wash off the stress. Yeah. Right. Calgon, take me away. <laughs> 
Okay, so the next thing you can do is sometimes the best thing you can do is just to keep going. Persevering on a bad day doesn't mean that you have to grit your teeth or yell. Just cut back on the lesson instead of completely stopping. Pull from other educational resources and you can mix it up and you can get the same result or the concept mastered. But sometimes trying to force things and power through will lead to tears and less learning. So you have to know when to cut your losses. Oh, for sure. You can also try meditation or some kind of quiet, calming yoga. But we love these YouTube hypnosis audios. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> listened to those, but uh, maybe everyone just needs to lay there with their eyes closed and like focus their thoughts elsewhere. And uh, hey, if they fall asleep, then great. Maybe that was what the problem actually was. <laughs> right. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes you need to hit up the source to find out what the struggle is. So you might want to just ask your child. You'd be surprised sometimes they might have some insight to what's going on beyond what you have even thought. You could say something like, why do you think this is so hard for you? Or what do you think will make this easier right now? If you collaborate with them, they may give you some of the insight on what's going on and why you're hitting a bump in the road. You may be surprised if you just take a moment and hear them out. If your child has a bad attitude towards you because you're having a bad day, because words have been exchanged or there's tension, they're going to have a hard time receiving what you're trying to teach them. Yeah, you have to operate with caution right. there, but definitely ask. You can also try going for a drive. Get out of the house, put an audiobook on in the car, maybe go look at a cool neighborhood or something you like to see from the car. Right. Uh, we used to have like a little field with these donkeys near us. <laughs> So sometimes I'd be like, all right, everybody, we're going to stop being an ass and go <laughs> see some asses. Can we say ass online? Yeah, we, yeah, we can say that. It's our want. podcast. <laughs> go see the donkeys. Maybe that'll clear everybody's mood up. Don't be an ass. Okay. Don't be an ass. And one of the biggest recommendations when you're having just a complete blowout bad day is to just bag it. Bag that bag whole day. It. Bag it up. Right. When the day's feeling like a big fail and the ship is sinking and you're feeling <laughs> like a captain that has totally failed, just stop and completely abandon the ship and take the day off. Mm -hmm. Put school away. It's still going to be there tomorrow. Tomorrow's a new day. Right. You could go to the coffee shop with your teenagers or take your littles out for ice cream and turn the day around. It's one of the wonderful things about homeschooling. You can do that. Be willing to be silly and find something to laugh about. It's hard to stay grumpy when you find something to laugh about together. It's going to restore your relationship, so just let it go. It's okay to pick up school later. This is one of the wonderful freedoms that homeschooling has given to us. Those horrible homeschool days can feel so big in our minds when we are in the middle of it, but at the end of the day, the relationship you have with your children is much more important. Oh, for sure. Look at the big picture and how might that affect the way that you handle your homeschool day going south? Sometimes we need to apologize to our kids, mm -hmm. and that can be scary. It might be hard for some of you, but we are human, and we make mistakes, and sometimes we lose our cool. I know I have. Have you? Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> it's good for them to see us model that, right. you know, that response. Absolutely. Too. Sometimes we're the problem. So if I find that I'm in the wrong and apologize to my kids, they're usually pretty receptive to that. So it doesn't make everything better, but sometimes it can calm whatever chaos is going on. Learn how you could have handled the situation differently and just prepare better next time and move on. Yeah. You know, something that I have always done myself, even before kids, is I tend to be like kind of a stress cleaner. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, if I'm angry and stuff, like I'm like, okay, well, now let's get the grout clean in the <laughs> bathtub. So that's something that you can do with when you're having a bad day is right. grab your kids up and let's let's cook or clean together. And I, I forget who the comedian was that I heard say this once, but it was something like, if you feel like you hate everyone, you need a snack. But if you feel like everyone hates you, like you need to go to bed. And, <laughs> and very simple, but like, I think that we, <laughs> we've all been there before where all that anger and all that chaos of the day is really because you just needed a snack or a nap. Right. So do that. Go make a snack, angry, clean something together and see if that can like turn your day around. Right. One thing that you really need to think about is your adult time. You need to give yourself something to look forward to. Plan some much needed adult time. Plan a date night with your spouse or even alone or you can just hang out with your friends. Join an adult sport. I have, and it's saved my life yeah. between softball, tennis, racquetball, pickleball, all the things I play. I need it. It's my therapy. So that's something you can think about. Do something you enjoy and don't talk about homeschool while you're doing that. We need more than just days filled with homeschooling. 
Yeah. You know, we've always loved doing like mom's night out with our girlfriends and and some dad friends as well. Sometimes we'll meet at a restaurant. Sometimes we do a potluck at someone's house, but someone's always willing to meet up. Some of our best attended events are the ones we just like throw together on the fly. So sometimes karaoke parties. We've done that. (laughs) Yeah, totally, totally done that at the kids event. But yeah, you know, I read something recently about I think it was one of those am I the asshole questions. Um, But the guy was like, why is my wife so angry when I get home from work? Like, every day, you know, after she's been balancing kids and everybody was like, she's not angry. She's like just done with the day. Like, you know, sometimes we're just, we're over. Like our cup is empty. We need a refresh. One thing that you can do to kind of help turn your child around or to help turn their mood around is to just validate them. It's so important that we don't ignore their feelings. Mm -hmm. They are feeling the stress of the bad day too. So acknowledge and validate their tension and anxiety and that you are teaching them how to cope with the things when they don't go so well. Yeah. So how do you teach an angry child? Right. Well, first of all, you need to try to find out the reason behind your bad homeschool day. Yeah. Evaluating the situation may help you to fix the problem, just like all the things we just went through. So think about those. Look at your days and think of all the possible reasons that might be triggering those bad vibes. Yeah, like um, a sick kid, maybe. I can't tell you how many times I've had like a really rough day with a kid and I go to put them to bed and they're like raging with a fever. Yeah. And then I feel so bad, like, oh, that's that's right. what it was. Are they hungry? Are they tired? Sometimes those growth spurts, you don't think that they're hungry because it's not their typical time to or eat. Or you just ate. Yeah. Right. And so sometimes they're just hungry or they're tired. They didn't sleep well. Yeah. Um, what about you? Are you grumpy? It's totally okay for a teacher day. Let's yeah, take, take those- a teacher, take an in-service day, like, <laughs> like teachers do at school right um maybe they have a problem with like a new homeschool schedule um are you new to homeschooling are you trying to do too much are you trying to fill like unrealistic expectations this is a super common problem with beginning homeschoolers because it's a constant feeling that we all have that we're not doing enough like i said we all feel that way like even us we're experienced homeschoolers but there's every day we're like oh but did we do enough you almost always are doing more than enough so don't worry about it well when you think about your one-on-one time as compared to in a classroom with even a one to 20 ratio in a classroom that child is not getting that time yeah so yeah we've talked about how like your physical presence is more important really than all of that stuff right another episode another thing is do you have a stubborn child who is just not cooperating i mean what's going on with them so you need to consider what's going on in their mind Uh, Maybe there's a problem with time management. Maybe it's exhausting and difficult. In our schedules, routines, and rhythms episode, we talked about helping to manage your time and organize your day and set it off on a good note. So that might be something to watch there. Oh my gosh, my friend Annie had, uh, when her daughter was three or four years old, she had a frustrating time with her because uh, they would go in every day for lunch to her in-law's business and her daughter was going through kind of this shy phase, but everybody was excited to see her. They'd be like, oh, how are you doing today? (laughs) And so she would close her eyes and just be like, I'm very, very tired pretend to go to sleep like (laughs) while standing there and Annie would be so embarrassed and like mortified this is so rude and she tried kind of all these different punishments and things but you know how do you really punish that she (laughs) was tired so anyway she ended up making this like good girl chart instead and put it up on the wall with stickers every time her daughter was just playing together nicely with friend or something like that she'd be like oh that's gonna be a sticker on your chart and uh, V became like totally obsessed with the stickers and earning them and all of a sudden guess what she wasn't so tired uh, when she'd go in to visit dad's she had a little incentive yeah it was funny I'm creating this chart to help you put up in your classroom to kind of if you're having that really bad day to reference the chart and kind of remind you to do some of these yeah, things that redirect, we're talking about. Yeah, redirect, try something else, try one of those things we recommended. All right. Um, there's also a great book uh, called Raising Your Spirited Child. Oh, that's by a great book. Mary uh, uh, Kersinka, I'm not sure how to say her last name. We'll link it in the show notes. But, you know, some kids are naturally just more intense, perceptive, persistent, and energetic. And this applies to both, like, neurotypical and neurodiverse kids. Sometimes homeschooling is totally going to be a journey to find out that kid's currency and how to accommodate their needs while still filling the requirements of their education in your homeschool. Right. Every child is different. And so exactly how you school them, how you parent them is not going to be the same. And you're not going to parent or homeschool each child that you have in your home the same. Right. 
you obviously on those situations want to talk to your doctor to rule out any special problems or possible issues that could be health caused if this is an ongoing issue. Sometimes a problem is going to be out of your control and require some intervention or treatment. Remember, this is not a reflection on you. And again, rejoice in the fact that you are able to cater individualized care to your child. Yeah, but if this isn't an extenuating circumstance, then refer back to all those other ideas we just shared. We hope that all of your bad days are simply that, just like one bad day. Right. So just a reminder that this is a weekly episode. We drop one every Thursday morning just for you. And if you have any additional ideas or comments, please come and comment on our Facebook page on the episode thread or send us an email at info at btdthomeschool.com. We'd really love to hear from you. So when should you abandon ship? Anxiety and frustration bring anger, and as we all know, anger can make things even worse. Mm -hmm. Bad moods are totally contagious. We've already given you some ideas on what to do, but here are some homeschooling mistakes of what not to do. Right, like uh, we just talked about, having excessive or unrealistic expectations, you are doing enough. Don't be a slave of overscheduling or underscheduling. It's really easy to fill all the extra time in the day when you're a homeschooler with extra activities, but you know, do be careful about that. That's a problem. Right. Oh that's my a gosh, problem that's, I have sometimes. I've had that problem. <laughs> but inversely, make sure that you are finding time to get out of the house and around friends and other activities. Another mistake might be fretting over not having a properly organized homeschool room. You really don't need a special space to homeschool, but at the same time, some organization is nice and it's fun to make a really fun homeschool room. It's going to be hard to rein in everyone every single morning if you are in a scramble to find all your stuff and get supplies together. Yeah, nothing like starting out the day and then like you can't find something and so everybody bails. Oh, gosh. Like, and then you've got to find all the kids again. <laughs> it's frustrating. I can't tell you how many times I was frustrated in just that moment. So I've learned to keep everything together. Yeah. Uh, another thing is to have no recess or time for the day. We've talked about this, how important outside and active time is. And so make sure you take time for recess breaks or going to the park. Yeah. Uh, things not to do. Uh, unfavorable homeschool curriculum. Bag the things that don't work for you or adjust them. Like, don't feel like you have to do this program just because somebody else loves it or, you know, it worked for your other kid. Right. But it's not working. It's not working. Like, get rid of it and get something else. Or doing every single thing that the curriculum requires. Yeah, like, you don't have to. Adjust it Like, for make you. it work for you. You're the homeschool teacher. So change it. Also, doing it all alone. We all need friends. Mom and the kids, too. And online support is even okay. You know, the kids have friends that they've met, online gaming and things. Um, Some of my best homeschool support friends are people I've known for years, like online. I know everything about their entire families. I've never, ever met them in person. Wow, really? Yeah, totally. So, um, you know, it doesn't even need to be in real life, but make sure that we all are not doing it alone. Right. We will include some of the links and ideas and everything that we're talking about on our show notes on our website. So be sure to check that out after you listen. We would love it if you would take a second to go out there and like and rate us. Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. We are on all those streaming platforms. So go out and check us out. Give us a thumbs up. So how do you survive big life changes? Sometimes that bad day isn't just one day. Maybe it's stretching out a bit too long because something is out of your control. Again, take pause, take deep breaths, and adjust. Like moving. You know, we've done this so many times. For a while, we were on an every two-year transfer, and let me tell you, it can be really rough. I often joke that I'm behind on schoolwork because of my move, but I'm not actually talking about, like, my last move. I'm talking about, like, three moves ago. (laughs) Gosh, Nicole. (laughs) But, you know, just like the airplane wants the adult to put their oxygen mask on first and then your child second, uh, do this with things like moving. Put your schoolwork on hold. Unpack your stuff. Take breaks. Spend time exploring your new area with your kids. Get everyone involved in arranging their new room and that new house process. Because once, you know, mama's happy, then like everybody else can move forward. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And, you know, just like in our holiday episode, like they're still learning even if it isn't out of your curriculum book right then. There's other stuff that's going on. They're learning all the time. Right. A new baby can come and complete the chaos to your homeschool, which is always fun. We've talked a lot before about things like doing read-alouds and other activities while the baby is nursing or napping, so that's always a good idea. 
there are lots of ways to still get stuff done with a new addition, but again, be sure to take care of yourself and this new adjustment. It's okay to let go. It's okay to let everyone watch a little too much TV for a while or just play games. Babies grow so fast and your life will be completely different in a couple of months when they get to the next yeah. level. And then it'll be complete chaos again until you get to the next <laughs> developmental level. Right. And right. so on and so forth. And then they graduate. Beauty of so. homeschooling. Just <laughs> make the adjustments. This is one that we've dealt with. You too is death of a pet or a loved one. And this can be really, really hard, whether it's a sudden death or something in which everyone's kind of watched unfold slowly or even had to take a caregiving role in. And you're going to want to proceed slowly with caution while still allowing everyone else time to grieve and knowing that there isn't, that grieving isn't always a linear process. Everyone grieves differently and it's going to take some time to like figure out what every little person in your family needs while also caring for yourself. Right. Well, and when my kids, when their grandfather died, we were sure to we took time away from school but we also did a lot of things to commemorate him and we made a slideshow of his life and we did a lot of things that just kind of helped us be in the moment for yeah. whatever grief period that we needed yeah, so that's that very was, sweet it was good so the next thing would be divorce as you probably know I am divorced we went through this when they were four and eight. So we were actively already in homeschool and we were already actively involved in homeschool groups. So it was really important for me to kind of continue life. A lot of things were changing within their lives. So it was really important for me to kind of keep some of their regular activities going. So we were sure to still go to park days, hang out with friends. And honestly, in my situation, he wasn't really a big part of our lives. He worked all the time and he often wasn't even there in the mornings or even at dinner time. So it didn't make a huge impact, but still having two households was huge for the kids. At that point, I know a lot of people stopped homeschooling, but for me, it was really important to continue because it was kind of a really big, important constant in their life. And I feel like over the years that that has definitely made a big impact on their security and them being able to connect with the people that they had always connected with. Yeah. Make sure that they have plenty of time with both parents. And if you can make your ex part of their homeschool and they are on board, that's even better. Unfortunately, there are some of us, me included, that have unsupportive co-parents when it comes to homeschooling. Even though we went into this decision to homeschool our kids together, as soon as we were getting divorced, he was like, nope, they're going in school and you're getting a job and this is the way it's going to be. Well, that was his plan. That was not my plan. So I went ahead and I moved forward and it was just important for me to keep that constant. So that's what I did. And even though it's been uh, hard and challenging, it was super important for me and for my kids. And I knew it was exactly what they needed. So that's what I did. But if you can get them to come on board and be a part of the process, I would highly encourage that bring them into your homeschool. You're still a family. So proceed as such. And the kids will also feel that. So just keep going. Yeah. We met you right after that, I think. And you know, it's always okay to take a break. Don't panic and think, oh, I can't do this right now and homeschool. Like I'm gonna have to send everybody back to school. You can do this. And now is not the time to like throw even more life changes in there by panicking. In most cases, this is going to be a short bump in the road, but you're busy forever modeling resilience and patience and perseverance for your child through these trying times. And that's really going to mean everything to them. Right. And just remember that things will turn around and they will get better. You are enough for your kids. So be that parent that they need and be the constant in their life. I think that we've given everybody a lot of tips and tricks to get through either a hard time or a bad day to move forward in their homeschool. What do you think, Nicole? Yeah, I hope so. I hope we've given everybody some new things to try on their next bad day. Not right. that we wish a bad day on you. No. <laughs> We'd love to hear if how you've survived your own bad day. Please send us a message at info at btdthomeschool.com. Yep. Even um, if you have a funny story to share, we would love. Yes. I mean, we have plenty of our own, but we would love <laughs> some more. We, we, we always love a funny story. So Right. <laughs> Next week on episode 17, we're going to be talking about how do you prepare a middle schooler for high school? 
We have a listener from Minnesota that helped inspire this episode. And so we're excited to talk about the middle school years. We're going to talk about what does your middle schooler need to know? We're going to be talking about how do you deal with sibling growing pains? How do you motivate your middle schooler? So we're going to be talking about all of that and more next time. And more. Yeah. See you next time. All right. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Be sure to check us out on our website at btdthomeschool.com, as in been there, done that, btdthomeschool.com. You can join our mailing list and get news and updates on future podcasts. And be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at the BTDT Been There, Done That Homeschool Podcast.